Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time around I've got something different. I'm not talking movies. I'm talking movie related vinyl. Licorice pizzas. And I have a stack of them here that I grabbed off the shelves. The shelves are just over there. Just past the face in the crowd. And I haven't got a record player set up at the moment. So I thought I'd go through them and take a look at them and share what they are with you. I can't play any of the music of course because it's all copyright. And I'd get a strike against my channel if I did. But there's some weird movie related stuff here. And I thought it might be time to let you know the kind of stuff I'm into. So let's get started with this one. Which isn't directly related to a movie but I picked it up a couple of years ago. It's called The Tarantino Experience. Two discs and it's got a lot of interesting things on it. Um... Spooky by Classic Four, Misery Lou, Dick Dale from um, Pulp Fiction. You Never Can Tell Chuck Berry from Pulp Fiction. Mum Bob Yum Yum by Serge Gainsbourg. Bring a Little Lovin' by Los Bravos. Rebel Rouser by Dwayne Eddy. Straight Shooter Mamas and the Papas Apache. Down in Mexico, uh, Son of a Preacher Man by Dusty Springfield. There's a list there if you want to freeze frame it. But it's kind of a cool double set. I don't think I paid much for this. There's a big LP there, and there's the track listings. Almost retro now, because vinyl is very much a niche thing these days. And it's, it's very retro, but it's making a resurgence, of course. But then so is cassettes, and, and CDs are making a resurgence. As people decide they don't want to have, keep paying for Spotify forever, and they want to have a discreet physical media collection so they can enjoy the kinds of things they like without necessarily sharing that information with an algorithm so there's that and i'm putting these down carefully because the stack's pretty tall and i don't have enough room to put it elsewhere on the desk this one should be in every monster kids collection put plastic on it for some reason monster mash bobby boris pickett and the crib kickers on bar full vinyl it's uh, by axis which was a hang on where is it there axis which was a cheap a uh, releasing company here in Australia. It's got Monster Mash, The Graveyard Shift, Blood Bank Blues, Rabbi and the Fiendish Idol, Monster Holiday, Monster Minuet, Transylvania Twist, Sinister Stomp, Me and My Mummy, Monster Mash Party, Bella's Bash, and Let's Fly Away. A themed LP, definitely. And there's Boris Bobby Pickett. Bobby Boris Pickett there. And down the bottom it says, Electronically reprocessed to simulate stereo, because apparently originals were in mono. So I've got that there. It's got a whole bunch of liner notes on the back. I've got that and everybody should have that in their collection if you're a monster movie fan. Time for some European art house film of the 1950s, 1960s. Music by Manus Hadzizakis. Never on Sunday. The soundtrack. Jules de Sin's movie starring Milena McCurry, who he was married to. Lots of kind of Greek bazooki music there. A film I really like. It's very sex positive for a film of its era. There's the back cover as well. Really great music there. Uh, it's got the Never on Sunday theme. Uh, it's got some bazooki music there. Never on Sunday with the vocals. And a whole bunch of the rest of it. And down there, of course, they've got advertising for other things like the Eddie Duchin story, the King and I, and the Glenn Miller story all on vinyl. Universal Record Club in Sydney at the time. So it was actually a record club release, this one. There were record clubs where people monthly would get sent things whether they wanted them or not. This one's a TV show compilation from a very popular TV show of a certain era. The Dean Martin TV show. Basically Dean Martin singing with people on the TV show. This show is incredibly popular. There's a track listing on the back. It's not as polished a production as a studio album would be because you've got the applause of the audience in the background and things like that. It's an artifact of its time and I kind of like it and I don't mind that artwork either. It's on the Reprise label, which was Sinatra's record label. Kind of cool. And if you have a look carefully at the track listing, it doesn't have the usual stuff you expect from Dean Martin, which makes it even cooler. This one's actually the original Broadway soundtrack. It's not the movie soundtrack. I think I've got the movie soundtrack here as well. A phenomenon of the 1950s, a satirical cartoon, was made into a musical. Little Adna, the musical, on vinyl. CBS Coroner recording... Anybody famous starring this? Stubby K, of course. Howard St. John, who was also in Banning. I've mentioned Banning on the channel. 
Tina Louise is in there as well. Julie Newmar. Charlotte Ray. So, you know, pretty interesting characters in there. There's a track listing of all the songs. Very satirical about politics, this um, musical. And the dancing was fantastic in it. The movie itself is pretty good. It'd be nice if there was a Blu-ray release of the movie. Because I did enjoy that a lot when I saw it most recently. Then we got an Australian one. People might remember The Adventures of Barry McKenzie, a satirical Australian exploitation movie directed by Bruce Beresford, starring Barry Crocker, Barry Humphreys, about an innocent Australian guy who goes to England and gets ripped off by the Poms. The music and the songs from that were put on an album by Barry Crocker, the guy who played Barry McKenzie. It's called Barry McKenzie's Party Songs, and this one is autographed, which is kind of rare. Uh, Barry Crocker's still around. Barry Crocker is still on Facebook, and he's really an interesting guy. Very into social media for somebody who's in his 80s now. A well-regarded Australian icon of entertainment. He had you know, a variety of shows on TV before he made some movies and a whole bunch of other stuff. And you can find his albums in a lot of op shops. He made a whole bunch of albums as a singer. They've got a number of them, in fact, in the collection. But there are things like One-Eyed Trousers, like the song he sang in The Adventures of Barry McKenzie. Chandra in the Old Pacific Sea, that kind of stuff. It's um, very kind of blokey and mocking of Australian blokiness. There's the bag of it with him with a can of Fosters and a meat pie. By the way, nobody in Australia drinks Fosters. It's an export beer that we did to get back at the imperialists. It's, it's a shit beer, to be honest with you. Fosters is a really low-rent, low-quality beer. So when people go, oh, I'm going to drink an Australian beer and they're drinking Fosters, you can look down on them. Just a little bit of a word to the wise there. This one's kind of interesting. It's a um, 12-inch maxi single, it's called, from television's greatest hits. It's the theme and variations on the theme of the Jetsons. The Jetsons theme and um, a whole bunch of other stuff. It's got the Jetsons main title, written by Coyt Hurton. Great banger of a thing. Um, a long play version of that. Jane, get me off this crazy thing, a master mix of the theme. Another master mix and a dub mix. So there it is there. Kind of interesting that this came out at all, that they kind of made dance mixes of this particular one, which is kind of groovy, and I think it may be slightly rare now. But I do like it, and I really like Hoyt Curtin's music that he did for Hedda Barbera particularly things like the theme music from Johnny Quest is a real banger that's like iconic with the the guitar riffs in it and the percussion just marvelous stuff now there was a phenomenon which I suppose continues to this day to some extent of actors singing and interestingly enough this is a title which also has an Australian political context it's called Closing the Gap Michael Parks Michael Parks appeared in a whole bunch of the later um, Tarantino movies. He was in Red State, a really good film, probably the best film Kevin Smith ever made. There he is on the back in his um, Then Came Bronson days. It does have a fold out as well. Don't smoke, kids. And there they are in the studio making the music. Haven't played this one in a long time. Mostly kind of country and western kind of stuff. But I, I'm fascinated with albums by actors of a certain age. And while we're on the subject of Cowboys, soundtrack to Midnight Cowboy. Everybody's talking, sung by Nielsen. Fantastic to have this on vinyl. This is an Australian pressing from United Artists. Yeah, it's got all of the songs from the uh, movie itself. And I'm trying to get that into focus for you. John Barry has so many very varied soundtracks, really. He started with the James Bond stuff and Beat Girl and things like that in the early 60s. And then developed a, a real style and ended up doing things like the music for the black hole he's gone from midnight cowboy to the worst science fiction movie of a certain age the black hole that's just the way it is with these things you take the gigs as you find them what's this phenomenon of albums that adapted the themes to various tv shows and put them onto vinyl and put them all together as you know top tv themes and this one I found a couple of years ago. Jeff Love and his orchestra, top TV themes of the Persuaders, 
um, Casanova, the Eden Line, Hawaii Five-0, the Troubleshooters, Jason King, Strange Report, Love Story. So they basically, you know, based, did variations on the soundtrack themes to these various TV shows. There's the back of it. There's not too much on it. And the covers and the um, boxes coming apart on this one, which tended to happen. But these things have a very kind of lounge music y sound to them. And I picked it up for a couple of bucks. Just, uh, and they're from music from, they were from music from Pleasure, which put out a lot of these kind of things and a lot of remixes and reinterpretation of popular songs as well, usually with a kind of semi clad lady on the front of the albums just to increase the sales of the album. Soundtrack to the Oscar, which is. Um, a very, very bad movie. I've talked about this movie on the channel with Stephen Boyd, um, Tony Bennett, Elke Summer, you've got Jules and John in there as well, Joseph Cotton, Ernest Borgnine, uh, all sorts of people. But yeah, this is, it says not for resale. Oh, it was delivered to radio stations for them to play. I like the idea that there's a track on there called Posh Party. But on the back, of course, you've got all of the usual liner notes. But again, this one's kind of a rarity. What's it say? Seven, did I get this for $7.50 at Recycle Records? So $7.50 I paid for this originally. There you go. The Oscar. This one again is another one by an actor. It was remade because it's got the corner of the cover cover. A whole bunch of songs by Harry Ruby. Sung by Zero Mostel. Songs my mother never sang. There are songs like I Was an Incubator Baby. Show Me a Rose. My Dream of the South of France. Hold Me Thusly, God Bless Everything in the USA. These songs are a crazy good fun. And Zero Mostel did a great job with them. Kind of a rare album now. I don't even know whether this one is on Spotify. But great songs. One of the true epic comb over hairdos of all time, Zero Mostel. Fun comedy album. And it never gets talked about when people are talking about these kind of things. There's a back with tons of liner notes. Yep, I just did my due diligence. It's not on Spotify. So... That's the nice thing about vinyl. There are things there that the algorithm hasn't got hold of yet. While we're on the subject of actors, Bruce Willis is the return of Bruno. I love this album for no real good reasons. It's got a version of Secret Agent Man in there, a whole bunch of other stuff. Not the best singer, but he's got an enthusiasm about him. And yes, of course, Bruce Willis now has a phase here in it. Um, some intellectual disability problems but I still like this album from the days of smug Bruce Willis a lot of fun very very 1980s I enjoy it so I've got it in the collection I like Noel Coward I like Noel Coward's music Noel Coward was a mensch he was he did so much work for he toured near the front lines of both the European and the Pacific efforts during World War II, raised a lot of money, did a really interesting alternate universe play called Peace in Our Time about an England where they did capitulate to the Nazis, which hasn't got a lot of play, but he was definitely against fascism because, of course, being a gay man, he wasn't going to do well if the Nazis did conquer England. He did some cabaret stuff in America during the 1950s, singing his songs. And so there's Noel Coward in New York, which is very groovy, Noel Cow with a cup of tea, opposite the UN building, with a whole bunch of his songs, including I Like America, and all of the other great things he did, and there's a lot of no liner notes on there. Then there's another album I have, Noel Coward in Las Vegas. Now, people who have a keen sense of interest might realise it's the same picture of Noel Coward superimposed on New York City. It's the Las Vegas one. Different songs in this one. Some similarities between two of them, but uh, they are two different albums of two different things. One was recorded in Las Vegas and one was in New York. But I like Noel Coward's music. I like Noel Coward as an actor, as an entertainer. He just adds Noel Coward. In fact, I've got a book here of all of his song lyrics. So I've got those two, which I picked up many moons ago at an antique store. Another musical I like, even though it is about sport, Damn Yankees, with Ben Verdon, Ray Walston, uh, Tab Hunter's in there as well. Fun little musical, with Bob Fosse doing the choreography in there, and Bob Fosse and Gwen Verdon doing a double act. 
little number in this one, which is a bit of fun. But I like Damn Yankees, and this is a much recent, much more recent pressing than the original one. Don't like all of the songs in this, but I like enough of them to make it worthwhile. And I like Gwen Verdon. I've got that in the collection as well. And then I've got something really bad, like chronically bad, monstrously bad, catastrophically bad. A remake of a 1930s movie which really hits hard and well. The remake of Lost Horizon, which was done as a musical with Peter Finch, Liv Ormond's in there as well, Bobby Van, George Kennedy, a bunch of other people. Uh, the songs were uh, written by Burt Bacharach and Hal David, and they're not very good. There's uh, Shangri-La, and there's a little flip up with Liv Ormond dancing with a whole bunch of Asian children. So I've got that one on vinyl. Burt Bacharach conducting the orchestra. He was married to Angie Dickinson at one stage, Lucky Bastard. This is a music from a biopic starring Tyrone Power and Kim Novak. The Eddie Duchin story. Which is really interesting. The music on this uh, is... The piano is by Carmen Cavallaro. But it is all of the songs from the soundtrack. About a piano player who died at an early age. And was very popular at one stage. And in the movie he's played by Tyrone Power. Lots of piano stuff in there, kind of fancy pre-Liberace piano work. Again, this is a quite a, a shitty copy of the album, but the vinyl itself is in good nick. Then we've got another, we've got an actress album. An actress who turned up in a lot of 1960s spy movies. Dahlia Lavi, Would You Follow Me? So Hot Pants are always a hit with me. And there she is being splashed upon. Not the greatest singer in the world. Not bad, but not the greatest singer in the world. Um, a whole bunch of different songs, including Love Story and Children of the World, Rose Garden, and Dahlia Lavi singing. Then there are a couple of um, albums of sweet, syrupy, romantic music of the 1950s, which were conducted and um, interpreted by Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason plays romantic jazz. And Horny, which is a little bit of a male gay thing. It's a, a production thing that uh, Jackie Gleason wrote the music for on Capitol Records. It's not quite, it's a long playing 33 and a third micro groove presentation. So it's bigger than a single, but smaller than an album. And those two are kind of interesting artifacts of a certain age. I'm so good at showing these things. But I picked them up again fairly cheaply and I suppose they're an investment. Then we have a compilation of James Bond's greatest hits. 20 original tracks. These are the original tracks. A James Bond thing, Kingston Calypso, Under the Mega Tree, From Russia With Love, all the way to For Your Eyes Only. So it does include some of those benighted Roger Moore tracks, which um, I could take a leave. Some of them are better than others. But there it is on the back with Roger Moore pretending to be scary. These, these are the original tracks, they're not interpretations of them. So I've got that. Then we've got a re-release of an adaptation of Lunochka, Silk Stockings, with Cole Porter's music, starring Fred Astaire, Sid Charisse, Janice Page, Peter Laurie, George Tobias, Jules Munchen, Silk Stockings. A great musical. I really enjoy this one. Now, I enjoyed Lunochka as well, the original version. But that's the musical. Fantastic Cole Porter soundtrack on it. And if you see the movie, Peter Laurie's really great in the film. I love Peter Laurie doing comedy roles. And he did a lot of them. And Silk Stockings is a bit of fun. So we're going from Cole Porter to Isaac Hayes. I've got the soundtrack to Shaft. On two discs. Oscar Winnie soundtrack. Fantastic groundbreaking soundtrack. It's got all of the stuff. It's got Theme from Shaft, Bumpy's Lament, um, Cafe Reggio's. Really great album. This one is just, you can put it on and just sit back and enjoy it. It's one of the great soundtrack albums of the 1970s. Now, the album cover itself is a little bit fragile here, but here, we'll, there's more Isaac Hayes stuff there, and there's some stuff about recording the album. And there's the back with the director Gordon Parks there. And Isaac Hayes. Killer soundtrack. And I'm glad I got it on vinyl. It, it just feels right to have it like this. By the way, I've got a coffee here and I haven't finished. Cheers. 
I think it's North soundtrack to Spartacus. Which I paid three dollars for, by according to this, from Barlow's book. Whatever the hell that was. Um, on the back, there's not a lot of detail, but there is some interesting artwork. Music composed by Alex North. I do have Dalton Trombo as the screenplay writer. The breaks were breaking the blacklist in the 50s to have Dalton Trombo's actual name on all of the stuff for Spartacus because he wrote the script, but he was blacklisted at the time. And Kubrick and Kurt Douglas broke that blacklist. Good album, very solid. Not a lot to dance to, but again, a good soundtrack album. This one I got about 10 years ago when I was in Perth. I really should do some movies by this guy on the channel. Russ Myers, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, with a script co-written by Roger Ebert. Uh, music, composed and, music composed and conducted by Stu Phillips. Great album. There's the back of it. And I really like this one. It works. If you've seen the movie, you know. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, vocals by the Sandpipers. It's got that kind of soft and sexy 1960s vibe about it, even though the movie is hardly that. I like having a copy of the album of that. From 20th Century Fox Records, courtesy of a and Records. While we're into the groovy era, Alice's Restaurant, Arlo Guthrie. Fantastic. It's got the full Alice's Restaurant massacre in it and a whole bunch of other stuff from the movie and, of course, the song by Arlo Guthrie. Kind of like having that here. There are these albums that I just I don't necessarily need to play them all the time but I like having them I like just knowing they're around same way with some movies and books as well there's something about physical media of various kinds that sits close to your heart and this kind of stuff does music composed by Victor Young Around the World in 80 Days Michael Todd's spectacular movie which was really big in the late 1950s Everybody who was anybody turned up in a cameo on this. And soon, of course, the stars David Niven, Robert Newton, and Shirley MacLaine, and Canton Fluss. Great stuff. And totally over-the-top, bombastic movie-making, based on, of course, Jules Verne's novel. So there's a whole bunch of um, very loungy kind of tracks on there. And it says, ultra-high fidelity, full orchestration. So you know it's good. This one I haven't seen anywhere before. Original soundtrack music for the motion picture, Beckett. With Richard Burton and Peter O'Toole, two of their heavies going up against each other. Who did the music? Music composed by Lawrence Rosenthal and conducted by Muir Matheson. Very heavy stuff. There are the tracks and the liner notes on the back. But uh, yeah, this was actually released in Australia by Festival Records. So again, kind of rare. This one's a reboot and I got this for $2 because of, why not? The soundtrack to The Thief of Baghdad, the 1940 version. Music by Miklas Roger, conducted by Elmer Bernstein in this case, and it's got perfect orchestrations of all the music from the movie because it wasn't recorded at the time. And because Thief of Baghdad's a movie that I love, I'm glad I got the soundtrack. I'm even more glad that I got it for $2 just as vinyl was dying out. It's just an incredibly good soundtrack as much as it's a beautiful, wonderful, magical movie. This one's got a soundtrack by Burt Bacharach and Hal David. The song sung by Dionne Warwick. The Love Machine stars John Philip Law and Diane Cannon's in it as well. The movie hasn't aged well because it's incredibly homophobic and the whole plot of the movie depends on homophobia. Got some good actors in it as well. Robert Ryan's in there as well. David Hemmings, Maureen Arthur, Shecky Green, Sharon Farrell's in there as well. I kind of like the movie because it is so sleazy and horrible, but it's a good soundtrack by Burt Bacharach and Hale David. And the old Warwick is good singing the theme song. Next up, this movie was released by Imprint in one of the early releases a few years ago. Incredible movie. One of the most scathing movies about Hollywood ever. The music was composed by John Barry again. The Day of the Locust. The soundtrack to The Day of the Locust. Killer movie. You've got to see this film. Donald Sutherland is fantastic. You're playing a character called Homer Simpson. Karen Black, Willie Matherton, Burgess Meredith. John Hillerman, Joreen Page. Not all of the music is by John Barry. There are some um, songs of the era as well on this soundtrack. Fantastic film, fantastic soundtrack album. Another one of my favourite musicals from the 1950s. Kismet. Based on um, a previous movie which had Ronald Coleman and Marlena Dietrich in it. Beautiful Cinemascope movie directed by Vincente Minnelli. All of the music in it was adapted from 
um, Hungarian Rhapsodies by Boroden. So it was borrowed from Boroden. Great stuff. I love a lot of the songs in this. A lot of fun. Yes, it is cultural appropriation to do an Arabian Nights kind of movie, just the same as Thief of Baghdad was. But there's the back of it. Dolores Gray, Victor Moon, Howard Keel, and Blythe. I like this album unashamedly. Then we get a romantic album. There are a couple of these. One was done by Dirk Bogard. One was done by Lawrence Harvey. This is My Beloved with spoken word lyrics to things. Spoken by Lawrence Harvey, which is kind of odd. And it's one of those kind of Lawrence Harvey using his received pronunciation voice to enunciate sexy lyrics. Weird piece of 1950s, 1960s popular culture. I've also got the Dirk Bogart one of these, but I've got it on CD. Maurice Jarre's music, Lawrence of Arabia, soundtrack album to Lawrence of Arabia. Every time I travel into a desert, this music runs through my head. And I got it for two bucks too, which is a pretty good deal. I've got the movie now, I think I've got it on 4K now. If I haven't, I soon will have. Fantastic score. I do have Rocky Horror, but I've also got the soundtrack to Shock Treatment, the sequel. Which, if you haven't seen it, you really should. It's a mad movie about the influence on television, on people. And yes, down the bottom there, the, um, the disc cover is a bit shitty there. Richard O'Brien, Patricia Quinn, Charles Gray, Jessica Harper, Cliff Young, Barry Humphreys, Ruby Wax. Interesting soundtrack album. There's a lot of the pictures from it. Heading back towards Never on Sunday. And by the way, I've got another copy of Never on Sunday for some reason. Because Theodore Arcus is Zorba the Greek. Anthony Quinn, Alan Bass, Irene Papas, a film by Michael Kakoyanis, Mikis Theodorakis's iconic music from Zorba the Greek. Love it. Getting down to the last few. This is a must-have in some form. Robert Mitchum, Calypso is Like So, which is Robert Mitchum singing about 10 Calypso songs. A lot of fun. That's the, like the ultimate Robert Mitchum picture. Glass of Rum, Beautiful Woman, Tropical Landscapes, Love that album cover. There's the back of it. It's a really cool album of music. And if you haven't heard it, you should. And if you don't like it, too bad. Talked about this one before. I've got the movie soundtrack of Little Abner, which is a lot of fun. Have a look at that set design. Fantastic stuff. A lot of the same actors who were in the original stage version are there, with a few exceptions. It's, uh, Leslie Parry, Stubby K, Howard St. John, Julie Newmar, Stella Stevens is in there, and Peter Palmer. Great fun, exploitation in a sense, but very entertaining for that. This one I think is underrated, The Deep. Again, this is a movie that was put out by Imprint in one of the early pressings. Music by John Barry, theme song sung by Donna Summer, which makes it very 1977. Yeah, this one came out after Jaws because people were looking at Peter Benchley products and put out The Deep. Directed by Peter Yates, Robert Shaw, Jacqueline Bissett in a wet t-shirt, Nick Nolte, Lou Gossett Jr. and Eli Wallach. There it is there. I like the movie and I like the album even more. I think it's a fantastic soundtrack album. The movie of this one was put out on the Kim Novak compilation by Imprint. And this isn't an uh, Imprint video. Pal Joey, Frank Sinatra, Rita Hayworth, Kim Novak. Great soundtrack album. Bit cut down from the more provocative original stage play. But there it is there. Directed by George Sidney. It's not a bad movie, but apparently the stage play was a lot harder. Um, originally, Gene Kelly was in the stage play. But Sinatra got the role in the movie. This one, I think, is a really underrated soundtrack. Richard Rodney Bennett only did a couple of soundtracks for movies. One of which was Billion Dollar Brain. And also Murder on the Orange Express. Great soundtrack. Very orchestral and very full. The movie itself, look at that cast. Albert Finney. You got Connery, you got Gilgood, you got Lauren Bacall, Jacqueline Bissett, Jean Pierre Cassel, you got um, Tony Perkins, you got Richard Widmark, you got Michael York, you got everybody in this bloody thing. There's the back of it. It's a good soundtrack. Very, very full and rich kind of soundtrack. And I like it a lot. In fact, I like Billion Dollar Brain even more, but Murder on the Irish Express is still a great soundtrack. This one's a Stanley Donnan film, which is very little known. It stars Richard Kiley. It's got Bob Fosse in it as well. And Gene Wilder playing a fox in The Little Prince. Based on the um, children's book. Really interesting movie. Where you see Bob Fosse moonwalk. Way before Michael Jackson stole it. There it is there. Set in a desert. 
Not a fantastic movie, but geez, there are some great songs and moments in this. Very underrated for that reason. And last of all, we'll end with James Bond, John Barry, Goldfinger. The Goldfinger soundtrack. And this is an old one. It's patched up, but it's like a classic Bond soundtrack. There's a back cover of it. You've got Sean Connery, you've got Honor Blackman, you've got Gert Frober, you've got Bernard Lee, Harold Sakata, Shirley Eaton, Tanya Mallet. One of the great Bond films. And there is the soundtrack. That's what I got for you. A whole bunch of movie-related soundtracks on vinyl. I may well do this with CDs at one stage, so let me know if you want me to as well. But I just thought I'd go through those as I was sorting through them. Going to get rid of some of my vinyl, but I want to keep some as well. So I was just sorting through and I thought, this might make a good video. Let me know if it did. All the usual things, by the way. If you want to support the channel, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can donate to the channel, you can become a channel member. Or you can become a patron at patreon.com slash movies. Watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Watch some movies with killer soundtracks. They are so rare these days. But when you find them, you know and you take them to your heart. And I'll catch you next time.